call the May 2nd, 2022 Bruins Select Board meeting to order. Uh, with us on my far left is Dave Sawyer, Kyle Parton on my right, Flo Smith and Joe Staub. I'm Brad Town. Um, with us also are is Vince Connie, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, our town treasurer. Uh, any changes or to the agen agenda? No, sir. <laughs> Public comment. Hearing none. Uh, Augustus Griffin amusement permit application. Yes, I believe Mr. Griffin is with us tonight. If you'd like to speak to that. Uh, yes, um, we're uh, a small CSA farm in uh, in Northfield, and we're hoping to do a uh, a little um, a, a couple bands out here to play um, just a free a free concert on on the property. But it's going to be um, the idea is that people can can donate uh, to our low income CSA shares if they want to. Um, uh, and but it's open it's it's open uh, to whoever wants to come. Uh, not doing it as well. It's just basically going to be like a like a block party, but with the possibility to donate for uh, to our low income CSA shares. Okay, um, this is your first application. Yeah, this is the first application. Uh, I did talk to um, our insurance, and it sounds like uh, we we sh it should be covered under a liability insurance that we have. Um, yeah. So, okay, uh, a motion on this? I make a motion to approve the amusement ordinance permit application. Um, and the date of the application is for July 16th. That's the event date from the operation of 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. And this is through Augustus McCabe Griffin. And the address is 365 Glennis Road, Berlin, Vermont, 05663. Do we hear a second? A second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? I have a, sure. I, I have a couple. Sure. Um, and so this is all new to me. The amusement ordinance and, and the special that we did a month or so ago, the special event yep. application. And I noticed in the special event application there is estimated number of people where the amusement we don't have an estimated number of people um, and, and what I see here is an event going from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, number of cars and I, I think there are some of the questions would be uh, egress for emergency vehicles um, do you, uh, maybe I could ask the question, are you, are you planning to have, this is an outdoor event, um, are you planning to have a, a bonfire of any sort? No, no fires. No uh, fires, okay. Because that would be one of the stipulations. That would be one of the stipulations I would say. Not all of our buildings. Okay. So people don't interact. Is this being held in the field in front of the, down behind the barn? Yeah, he said yes. Okay. Yeah. I do note on the application too, it indicates that you folks will be directing traffic and there is a copy of a certificate of insurance that's all on board and up to all agreed upon. I don't know if you can hear it. What, what was that? Was that a question? I, I, I sort of heard a statement. I wasn't sure. If... I was seeing on the application that it indicates you will be directing traffic. Will they be parking in the field? Yes. Yes, in the in the field by the by the house. So um, the town has a a pullout, and if you it's that makes the easy access into the field without it being very bumpy. Excellent. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, so once, once this is approved and signed off, uh, who gets a copy of this? 
And the only reason I'm asking is for EMS services that are going to be coming out of Northfield, and so this should be communicated maybe with um, with Northfield because they would be the responding service for EMS if if need be. That's probably not typical. No. Okay. Because usually it's um, when you do a special event or a amusement um, it's uh, you don't really warn because it's still it's still a public function just like if the mall opens tomorrow um, but it does sound like it might be a good idea just to give Northfield a call because it is a you know, well we have an unknown number of people yeah well I mean I, I am in communication with with uh, the Northfield town office as well since we're on the the border of the town, um, because I didn't want to, you know, it, the noise will definitely doesn't uh, stop at the town border. What genre of music are the bands? <laughs> 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 to help you market. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of genres. Uh, there's folk band. There's a uh, we're we're hoping to have a country band, and then there's also I think a rock band, but they're not one. 100% on board yet, so. Any other discussion on this? Okay. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Good luck with your event. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Have a good one. You yep. too. Okay. Um, Rainbow Bridge Community Center request. Yeah, he's not with us again tonight, so. How you'd like to proceed? I did send a notification to him. Well, so this doesn't keep coming back to haunt us. Uh, can we have a uh, motion on this? I personally would make a motion not to approve this based on. Uh, location and some other indicators that I'm not comfortable with. Do I hear a second? I second that. I'm not in, in approval of moving forward with this request. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, right away permit application. Martha Dalligan. Dalion. Dalion? Yes. Sorry about that. My daughter. Yeah. Um, this is for a driveway? Yes. She owns a two acre parcel on Bartlett Road. Yep. I think there's some photos in your package as well. Oh, has, yeah. any, has anybody looked at this as far as line of sight from the driveway for oncoming traffic? Uh, Tim has looked at it. He was good with it. Yeah. Tim signed off on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd make a motion to approve the cut based on the information that I have. Second. Any further discussion? Is there going to be a culvert or anything here? Yes, and that's what my excavator yeah, yeah, need to know the size the culvert you require. What's uh, 18 inch? 18 inch? Yeah. Okay. Um, take and have uh, Tim call up. Make sure that I can you confirm that. But I'm pretty sure we, t we put the minimum at 18. Yes, that's the minimum. Uh, any other discussion on this? No, I would just recommend that 12 foot. I mean, it, most in culverts are 16 foot, and they're better to go with 16 foot because as you're building on those lots, trucks turning in, they tend to crush the ends of the culverts. Yeah. So. I would also check with Tim on that, uh, but I think 12 foot's a little small. A little short? Short. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll have Tim get in touch, get him out take a look and discuss the culvert size. Okay. He's our highway super. Okay. And you have my phone number? I do. I have it. You're Ms. Ripley. Yes. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any other discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. 
Thank you very much. Not a problem. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Uh, Conservation Commission, Conservation Commission update to board an amusement permit application. We have uh, Wendy Lynn with us tonight from the Conservation Commission. And Tom's here also. So I have I have two points and then Tom has an item also that he's going to bring up. Um, my first thing is that um, the Recreation Committee and the Conservation Commission split probably about six months ago. I'm not sure exactly what the timing was on it. Um, and we were asked to um, decide who should have what responsibility, how to, re how to divide the responsibilities between the two um, committees. So we um, looked at what the state statutes are and we also met um, the Recreation Committee and the Conservation Commission met and discussed um, what we think should happen. And what we decided is that um, responsibilities should be divided um, depending on where they occur. So um, the Conservation Commission would be responsible on forest or they take the lead on that. That doesn't mean we'd be totally responsible, but we would be the lead. Um, group for that and that the rec committee would be the lead on any other recreational activity in town. So that would be like the ice rink or if there was um, recreation with the Newtown Center, playgrounds, that type of thing. So anything else besides the conservation land and the town force, they would take the lead on. And we also agreed to communicate back and forth if we got any requests, um, or if there's any problems that they would, we would invite them to our meetings and to put input into the request and vice versa, they would invite us also to their request. So, you know, the idea is to keep the channel of communication open. So basically the proposal is um, Conservation Commission takes care of things on conservation land and the town forest and, um, the rec committee takes care of all other recreational activity. And that's the proposal we're bringing to the select board. So basically you're saying the, the rec, I mean, the uh, conservation committee would take care of the real estate and the uh, recreation committee would take care of the activity. Um, no, what we're saying is the conservation commission would take responsibility for all activities on conservation land. And okay. the rec committee would take responsibility for all recreational activities that are not on conservation land. And this is, um, a lot of this has to do with having to deal with the natural resources and make sure there's not a problem um, with that. But also the state statutes sort of go that way. The Conservation Commission buys um, conservation land or is given conservation land and there they administer it and likewise um, state statutes have um, recreation committee um, mechanisms for them to purchase land and for them to administer it so the state statutes seem to line up based on the type of land that it's it's happening on okay. And I believe Tim also emailed um, Vince, and I believe also Brad sent an email just to indicate that we had talked and agreed on this. Tim or Hannah was supposed to be joining tonight, Wendy Lynn. I just reached out to him as well. I'm sorry? Tim or Hannah was also supposed to be joining from the rec committee tonight. Um, they're not here yet, so I've reached out to them as well to see if, okay. if one of them would join. Tim, Tim is not coming tonight. He had a conflict. That's why he emailed you. Okay. I mean, I'll try Hannah again as well. <clears throat> and then the second part, um, do you want to just work with that part? Or the second part is um, the... Um, a proposal for how to handle requests to use conservation land um, 
for big things that would impact either um, other users or um, trails. And the idea is to have a consistent open process that we can post out to the website. And if somebody wanted to make a request for a new use or new trail or change to the trail, um, everybody would know up front what the procedure was and what the process was. Um, and everybody would be would go through the same procedure, the same process. Um, and the procedure, I, I believe everybody must have a copy of that. Yeah, there's a copy in, in the package. So, so there's two parts to it. One is an application that gets information from the person making the request. And um, it, it looks at just what is the request but it also looks at who's going to put it together and what the costs are and who's going to pick up the cost. And also it looks at ongoing maintenance of, of the request and how is that going to be taken care of. So um, the Conservation Commission is not sort of left with all these loose ends um, without a way to manage it. Um, and also it, it guarantees a public process and it guarantees um, or if you have the impact on the natural resources and if there is a problem, you know, a way to look at it to see if there's some alternatives, some other ways to do it. And excuse me, I'd like to just ask a question. Who, who ultimately approves this uh, project application and stuff? Where, where does the approval come from? Blackboard would ultimately approve it. Um, what would happen if somebody made a request to use conservation land, they would present the um, proposal probably to the Conservation Commission. We would notify both the REC committee and also the select board that we had that. Um, and then we would start through the review process. And then um, when the review process was done, we would make a recommendation to the select board. Um, but you know, select board members could be invited to attend and to have as much input as they wanted to, depending on what, you know, if it was a larger project as opposed to, you know, something minor. And the same with the REC committee, they they would be invited to participate in that. And I've just arrived from the REC committee. You should see it. <clears throat> I'd just like to comment, I'm, I'm impressed with the thoroughness and the organization. Uh, I guess the only question I would have is in the review process or the application process, I didn't really clearly see a, a timeline um, and as far as how quickly or how slowly that an application or uh, could be considered or processed. And I'm not sure if that's something especially since you're a volunteer committee or two volunteer committees now that that uh, isn't easy to pin down but ha had you given any thought about that I guess is my question um, I did and <laughs> you know we talked about just a little bit and it's sort of um, I guess part of it is we are volunteer committees our committees run a little short right at the moment um, but we hope to rectify that um, but, you know, if this is a long term thing, I, I guess there should be a reasonable time frame on it. Um, it's, it's hard because some things have environmental impact that we can, you know, as a committee can discuss some of it, we may need to bring in somebody else with more expertise. So that would change on the timeline if it hit a wetland or something like that, there may be a need for, you know, somebody from the state or somebody to come in so that could very definitely change the timeline. Um, I don't know if you ever thought about how long it should be a recommendation for that. I can, I can see your, your concern and uh, how something could get stuck beyond our control here in the town of Berlin. But, uh, hmm. I can, uh, Wendy Lynn, I can talk to someone like Norfield and see what, what they do and what kind of time frame they work with with their rec committee on something like this. I mean, their uh, conservation and rec committee on something like this. 
Okay. I mean, they, they uh, bother you know, us. I'm sure they have some. Like, to the Conservation Commission. I'm, I've communicated with them a couple of times already. Okay. You know, so, I know some of these, some, you know, it's a really big project. Sometimes it does take a while to get through, you know, a review of it. If it's small, you know, you could maybe go through it fairly quickly. But we can reach out and try to get more information on timelines. Thank you. Just a little history for the new members on the board. This started with the previous board a little bit working on this to um, have something that standardized how we approached the organization, different organizations, because we didn't have anything at the time. And and VAS kind of brought that to light. We, Mamba was up there already. They hadn't done any of this, uh, essentially. And then VAS comes along and it almost felt like there was a little bit of an imbalance on how each of them were or had been treated. So. Um, they came up with a method to try to standardize. Anybody that wants to do anything up there will now have to go through the same process, have the same approvals um, to be consistent across the board with everyone. So that it's kind of how it evolved over time. I agree in having a process up there. I don't know that, I, I guess how it's going to be handled. I, you know, I haven't read this through, you know, the application, you know, I see the application and stuff like that, but how it's going to go in review and stuff like that. I haven't read through that part. And I'd really like the opportunity to kind of look at this and talk a little bit more. Because are we going in the, we're definitely going the right direction for a process. I just feel trying to approve this in the application process tonight, maybe we may be rushing it a little bit. Real quick. And that's, that's just my thoughts on it. I know, I know it came to light with vast and stuff because yeah. um, I personally would like to see a little more time and look a little more into this process. I can put it on the agenda again in June. I think that'd be plenty of time. First okay. meeting in June? Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be sufficient. Okay. And also, this is, seeing as this is the first draft, if we do this with one group and we run into, you know, things that aren't working, you know, I see it as something iterative to get a process that works. So, you know, there may be some kinks in this one and that we, we work it out, you know, as we go along. No, that's a good point. It is very new. It's never been tried. Right? Yeah, you're, so. you're headed in the right direction for sure, and I can agree upon that. I just I want to be able to dig into this a little more and just understand the process. And yeah. it's, 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 it's always the what ifs. Exactly. Uh, Doug, this, this is Tom Willard. Yeah, Tom. One, hi, hi, everybody. Um, Good to be back with, with the board. Um, I, I just thought I'd add that uh, some things, if if there was a new ATV or mountain bike trail, for example, application in late November and there was six inches of snow with more predicted um, or something through a wetland where we knew there was uh, some endangered uh, species, which we do have in Berlin, um, it, it may that just thinking about the time plan as we go through amendments to the process here, uh, some of these things would have to wait until spring and the snow goes or, or the vegetation emerges uh, in order to, to do the due diligence of locating that particular activity. So time, you know, it's a good discussion on the time frame. I just thought I'd mention that. Anything else, Wendell? I don't have anything else. If you have questions, I can try to answer them, but um, I don't have anything else right now. Okay. So I'll work with you, Wendell, on this. If there's anything uh, that you want to do between now and the first meeting in June as well to revise it, uh, to get it before the board again before that meeting. So okay, get, sounds good. Thank you. 
And I think Tom, you've got another item. Are, are we there? Um, yeah. The May 14th uh, bird walk. <laughs> the, the amusement application, yes. Uh, yes, uh, the um, Berlin Pond Conservation uh, Association, uh, together with the Berlin Conservation Commission, are sponsoring a, a little event. Um, the planning is to uh, walk with Everett uh, Marshall, who is the director of the, the Fish and Wildlife's uh, Natural Heritage Program. And Eric Sorensen, a uh, retired state biologist and an author of a couple books. Um, and the plan is to meet uh, about 8.30 um, at the uh, Fish and Wildlife Access Area, and then uh, a walk along Brookfield Road to the south end of Berlin Pond, near, near where the culverts are. Um, just kind of a fun walk to identify uh, uh, birds as as we go. And then at the south end, there would be at the existing uh, little parking area that is presently on uh, Gene Mastriano's land. Um, there'd be a little table set up with donuts and, uh, and cider, I think. And um, there would be just a little discussion of the um, uh, natural resource values of Berlin Pond and the wetlands and, and, and the area around it um, by, these, uh, by these two guys. And, and hopefully we would adjourn. That would occur about uh, 1030 at the south end for those that uh, for those that don't want to walk the length of the pond, um, and hopefully it would be wrapped up by noon or before noon. Um, parking at the north end, uh, there's, uh, there's parking for, I don't know, 30 or 35 cars along uh, the road uh, that the select board designated for parking there. At the south end, there's more, a little more limited parking. Uh, there's some parking that the select board has designated from the culverts to the east along the right-hand side of the road. Um, any overflow, members of the Conservation Commission and uh, the, the Watershed Association will park on Jerry and Meg's land, their field uh, uh, just up around the corner. In any overflow, if there is overflow parking at the south end, would be will be directed up to park in the field too. I, I kind of question whether there'll be over overflow. How popular this will be, but it's not unusual compared to what Brian Pfeiffer or others used to do, pretty routinely around the pond. But um, so uh, I'm. Thankful I asked if we need a permit. I almost forgot. <laughs> uh, thanks, Vince, for reminding me. Um, so I don't know if there's any questions that uh, Wendy and I could uh, answer. I'd make a motion to approve the ordinance uh, amusement ordinance permit for the bird of identification walk around Berlin Pond on 5 14 22 from 9 a.m. to noon. Sounds like a fun event. I second it. Are you coming? I will come. I will come. Excellent. It sounds like fun. Any further discussion? And, and have we done this? We've done this before. Correct. Uh, we haven't, as a conservation commission or the Watershed Association, of course, is, is brand new, less than a year old. But others have done it. I know that uh, that some of the local birders have uh, had events. Um, I don't know, but maybe the North Branch Nature Center is having one uh, the Friday before some fr some coming up soon. So it's it's not unusual, although we're we're planning on advertising this a little bit so it might you know it might create a little bit more crowd than than what some of the others attracted 
the, does the, the highway crew, can we put up signs saying something about <coughs> large numbers of people looking at birds and not at the traffic or something? Well, <laughs> you'd, you'd have the organization do that. The event organizers usually put up, so we ask them to put up signs. We'll, okay, they'll put up signs. Yeah. Okay. Like whenever there's a running event out there, the, the runner's club puts up the signs. And they just, you know, if they have time to have it printed up. Just... I mean, it's 25 on the back side of the pond. It's what, 35 on the front? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. There you go, Tom. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> uh, anything else? No. Okay. Um, Recreation Committee update regarding the Montpelier swimming lesson. All right. Um, in the past, I believe the PTNA at the school um, organized this. So there was only a little bit of information I could glean about how many participants um, utilized this program in the past. But what we did was um, subsidize a part of the fee for non-residents to for their children to have swim lessons at the Montpelier pool. And I think in the past we subsidized $25, so the total fee for uh, Berlin residents would be $27.50 um, for their week of swim lessons. And I think around 30 participants. Um, and it was a little bit difficult to get information from the Montpelier Rec Department. Um, people are away, and we shot a few things back and forth. But what I um, landed on with them was that I would print the registration form out, write Berlin across the top in giant letters, <laughs> and photocopy that to distribute at the school. Um, and I can also figure out how to distribute that to residents who aren't in the school. And so that Montpelier can track um, how many Berlin residents are signing up. And <laughs> what they wanted was for the resident to pay the entire fee and then get reimbursed by us, which I said, first of all, that could make it less accessible for the residents. And second of all, that seems like a really big headache for our town to reimburse each resident signing up. So I proposed that we gave, that we cut them a check for 30 participants. And if we go beyond that, then we'll pay more. Or if we go less than that, then they will reimburse us for that um, difference. So what I am hoping for is that we can approve getting $750 to the Montpelier Rec Department earmarked for the subsidization of 30 swim lessons. And we could cap it at that, or we could say we'll make up the difference as those registrations come in. Does that cover the full, I thought you said it was $2,750. The resident will pay $2,750, we will subsidize $25. So the total non-resident fee is $52.50. $52.50. So this is strictly for the Berlin residents? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, how much, how many people do we usually take in subsidized day? You know, I am thinking it's probably about 30. Your wife is one of the I was going to give you an email that you yeah, can check. That <laughs> she actually, Sarah, spoke with her this morning, so I think okay. the answer I got was around 30, sometimes more. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I would agree with that. Yep. Yeah, that was about and how much is months. earmarked for this? We don't have any. At this point, there was nothing in the budget for FY22 or FY23. Gotcha. However, there is a little over five thousand dollars in, in reserves. So, if they wanted to use some reserve money, they could so certainly from do the that. rec department. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the way it did work in the last when we were doing it was uh, the resident would pay Montpelier the twenty-seven fifty, and then they uh, issue a check to uh, to Berlin for twenty. No, excuse me. They they would pay their what they were supposed to pay. Um, to Montpelier, and then Montpelier would um, just 
give me one fee. In other words, 30 people signed up, all these people paid, so this is your, your cut. Which is what I was thinking would be easiest if they just like sent yeah. us a bill. Right. But they were very um, resistant to that, and I don't mm. know if it if something weird happened in the past or what the issue with that might have been. Boy, I don't know. I don't remember there really being too many issues. Yeah, I can't. Um, yeah, <laughs> but, but as far as uh, us taking tracking. the check from the person and then yeah, you, that. that, no, that's not doable <laughs> for the town. Right, I agree. No. <laughs> So, yeah, so this is all yeah. by per person. Do they their fee structure have a family, no. a family plan of some sort? No. no. So, so like if I go kids, to sign my kids up, I right. sign up each. I mean, I can write one check, but I have to do three registrations. Yeah. 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 Okay. And you feel that 30, 30 is a number you've been with for? Pretty much. I mean, um, you know, it's, according, we haven't done it for two years now, so now I'm really going back in time, but. Yeah, I would say, it. but there have been years there's more. Right. And I know that one of our recreation um, committee members homeschools her children and is a real advocate for getting the word out beyond the school, which makes a lot right, of sense. Right, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and there's younger kids too, so, I mean, mm -hmm. part of me hopes we would get more. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. yeah. I make the motion to approve the expenditure of the $750 approximately for up to 30 participants and using that from the reserve <laughs> funds of the Recreation Committee. I second that. Any further discussion? That, that wouldn't be a cap though, would it? Is that what you're thinking? I just thought of, because it'd be kind of, if they had 35 or even 40 residents for them to pay yeah. It would just be on a first-come, first-served basis, or would we re review this if there were additional 10 or 15 people showed it's up? It's a very good point. I mean, we were discussing it in terms of the 30 and the $750, but you bring up a very valid point. It could be 35 or 40 or 50 even. Um, do we want to have a cap and, you know, approve $750 flat? At this time? Mm-hmm. And then they could come back for it if they needed another ten people or whatever. That's just a thought. No, it's a good it's a good point. So how try to, in the past we took in or billed for the for the for the entire, you know, yeah, if it was a thousand dollars it was a thousand dollars. You know, and we just mm -hmm. paid that one check. Mm -hmm. I would, I would suggest that maybe uh, we come up to the check with a, an enclosed letter that said, uh, this is for the first 30 participants. Please bill us for any over any amount over 750. You know, it's a, it's a deposit in good faith if they don't trust us for the 750 like they have in previous years. But mm -hmm. then, uh, then we wouldn't uh, close anybody out that couldn't make the payment. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a wonderful cause, and I hope many do participate, especially since it's been two years, mm -hmm. and um, it's just a really good thing. I know my daughters participated years ago, and uh, it's wonderful. Carol, you're, you're saying that we would pay it up front or wait for the bill? Mm -hmm. The initial 750, I think we're paying up front, and that's what the vote is right now. But anything okay. over and above that, that um, maybe Mark Hillier would would invoice us for anything beyond. Beyond the 30, just maybe as we're, when we give them the check, attach a letter mm -hmm. requesting that. And if we only have 20 instead of the 30, they we're hoping that they'll let us know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Just to be clear for, for my part, <laughs> we're going to issue a check to the City of Montpelier for $750 on behalf of the Rec Committee for up to 30 participants with a letter that I will have to draft yeah. um, that states that and that if it's less than 30, we're expecting a refund. If it's more than 30, please send us a bill that uh, that will... For the additional... For the additional cost. Per mm -hmm. participants. Right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. I think I understand it. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, appointments to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission Emergency Management. Yes, I overlooked those.
those appointments in the last one when we did that large group, so I had to add them on for this one. But it's, it's in there, in your package. It's the two highlighted at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just the two on the it's bottom? It's just the two on the bottom. The others are already done. Oh, for I, the I missed those two system. in the last one, so that one's on me. I'd make a motion to uh, appoint uh, James, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> and Bruce Richardson to the Emergency Management uh, Committee. Second. <coughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. for the police and highway yeah, the, the, the uh, revised quote is in your in your package um, this this would bring both the highway and this quote now is, is complete it'll bring both the highway and the police department up to digital radio communications that and it also gives us BCS spot Recording on the on tower for, uh, the state bond, uh, to see. Mr. Del was not muted. Um, <laughs> up on the tower, so they have, you know, full coverage throughout town. Um, the the benefit of going with these guys on this quote is they already have a rack on the tower, so the monthly rate will be much lower than if we had to go through the tower for that. Um, it's going to be a hundred dollars a month uh, for the space on the tower. And if approved, would we be using these funds from ARPA? Only a portion. Uh, we have roughly, it was 18000 Yes. Between, yeah, there, well, we got four different reserves. Right. But for, between what we had in, in communication funds for the highway and mm -hmm. the police and, uh, and some reserve for communication upgrades, it was somewhere around eighteen or $19,000 that we have um, to go towards this to reduce the overall cost that would come out of the balance would come out of our okay. and I'm looking probably about 17,000 17? yeah because okay. we've got in the PD community fund get 6,000 and in the highway equipment we got 10,897 well that is that's a different one I guess that's why I was questioning it asset forfeiture has 11 7 22 I don't right. know if you want to use it for that or not okay. so roughly 37,000 to come out of our funds 37 and 17 yeah roughly 37 But this, again, this will be the last time in 20 years that we have to upgrade those radio systems because it'll be digital and up to snuff and on the tower so they have complete coverage for both the highway. We can save a little bit. I don't know that dollar amount uh, because on the highway side, we don't have to enable the public service frequency that the police have to have. So there'll be a little bit of savings there. I don't have confirmation of what that will be, but it's not going to be astronomical. Yeah. We just don't have to enable it on the highway side. Hear a motion on this? I'd make a motion to approve this, uh, the upgrade on the radios for the police department and the highway department with uh, revert, re reserve funds of 17,000 roughly and the remainder of 37,000 ish coming out of the ARPA funds. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I have a question. Yep. Didn't, did we talk about get repeaters for the mobile radios? I think maybe it was offline conversation. That was offline, yeah. I think, uh, I think there was some, some concern with some of the PD and going in some of the buildings and not being able to reach out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and so I think if your mobile radios, if you were set up with a repeater in, in their cruisers, they would be better off, be in a better position to communicate out. Better served. Um, just saying. Yeah. So, do you know what the, the cost of the repeaters are? For the cruisers? If yeah. You to do that? I don't, but I can find out very quickly. 
um, I, I will ask for a separate quote for that. Great. And then we could we could just move forward with this, mm -hmm. and if it's not working for them, then it's you know the hilltop is one of those places yeah. they walk yeah, in and they, and they can't reach out. Yeah. If it doesn't work, I mean, if we do this and it and they still need that, I'll bring it back to the board with, a, with another quote um, and what's involved with that as well. Fantastic. Okay. Any other discussion on this? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, approvals of the licenses, permits, vouchers, applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 22-22 for payroll from April 10th through April 23rd, 2022. Paid on April 27, 2022, in the amount of $48,155.36. Payable warrant 22G21 with checks 21972 to 21994 in the amount of $35,604.10. Also, Community National Bank NAACH payment number four for the 2017 truck loan in the amount of $15,561.90. The April Reconciled Bank Statements for the General Fund and Sewer Water Checking Accounts. I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, also liquor licenses to approve tonight, but that's in. Oh, yes. In addition, I make the motion to approve liquor license for approval, and we'll have signatures on that tonight after approval, of the Thomas Farm and Garden at 535 U.S. Route 302, which is a second class license, and Twin City Lanes 2 Incorporated, 708 U.S. Route 302 for a first class license, and a third class, and an outside consumption permit as well. Any problems with these before? No. Nope. Had they had the outside consumption license before? I, they had it last year, I believe. Mm -hmm. They got that little area off to the end. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion <laughs> carries. Uh, Please don't forget to sign the liquor licenses as well. Yeah. Um, Round table, Dave? I didn't have anything. Carl? No. Hello? No. Joe? Um, maybe just in reference to the amusement um, permits and the special event permits, is there a way we could maybe um, rewrite those to make it one? In the Probably process? Could. Probably could. I mean, it it's it's not much different because you have to you have to approve each one individually. Right, but so whether it, it says permit or application, it doesn't on the top of it. It doesn't really change anything unless you're looking to try to make it make all the applications um, uniform. Right. Well, I, I see on the special event there's estimated number of people. In the amusement, there's not. Well, even and, in, even with the special event, I mean. Yes. Until it's happened, you really right. don't know. <laughs> but I mean, dealing with estimates, I think it'd be easier to, um, I don't know, see the, the impact to the area or the town. Um, it'd be it maybe, you know, PD might might want to have uh, their their concerns might be something if the if the event was large and upwards, hundreds of people versus yeah. you know fifty people. And do we forward it to any like? Even the volunteer fire department and ambulance? No. Is Typ typically good? not. It goes usually to the highway. Again, we haven't had any, well, at least in my year and two months, so I haven't had anything that big or that major, but it typically goes to the highway department um, so they know there might be some something going on on the roadways and for the police as well so that they know. But that that's about the extent of it that I've done. But, again, I can draft something, bring sure. it to the board to have a look at sure. for further discussion. You know, and in the case of Glennis Road, I mean, we have uh, another outside entity being Northfield EMS, um, who would be providing service up there, and, and I really think that, that communication needs to be had as well. Um, 
So what you're saying, you want to take and have the permit uh, list uh, it being sent to um, both fire and, and the ambulance? I think they should have a, you know, some kind of a review. Uh, because you have a place there you can put four stipulations. You know, it's always four lines of something. Yeah. And allowing them to review it, to write something to bring to the board for us to have the discussion, for the approval, and you feel good about signing it as chair. Well, I, <laughs> I, I see your point because, especially in the times that we're in right now with, with numbers of peoples and incidents, that they have to be able to handle a tragic event or a mass casualty event and if we've got groups of people in locations like that somebody in the services need to know that hey there's going to be 50 people there this weekend mm -hmm. you know just to and determining eyes and ears and, exactly <laughs> yeah. just to have be, you know yeah. people either on standby or on call or something mm -hmm. you know it's just the times we live in nowadays mm -hmm. You know, during that time of day, he's going to have one, one person, one person out, and you're going to have a number of farmers and employees, and that one person to help with the incident up there if it's well, it gets out of hand. Yeah, I can remember back years ago in Stowe, I think it was the bike race or something they had where a car, some woman hit like six or eight people, and they were calling for Morrisville and Waterbury. Mm -hmm. I think, it, yeah, it's probably a, a good idea mm -hmm. to think about that. I'll we'll soft draft something and I'll have a distribution list on it for approval. And, you know, then I'll bring it to the board for review and comment. And we'll move forward that way. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, Joe? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anything, Vince? Oh, I might have a couple of things. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this one came in late, so I didn't get it on the agenda. It's a, it's a request. I'm just looking for the board's direction on this from VAST. They would like a letter of support for their trails program grant this year from us. I'm happy to draft one and bring it to the board for review. Has anyone had anything negative, negative to say about the VAST trail? I did not receive, I'm happy to say, I did not receive any calls with regards to the Vast Trail this winter um, from, from negative. There, there were a couple of emails about their, yeah, emails of regarding, uh, hey, it was a great trail, I hadn't been up there, and, you know, that type of thing. There was, there was a comment about, um, from the Vast side, though, regarding dogs running unleashed um, that they had to be careful of and watch for, but other than that, it was it was pretty quiet. Yep. Mm -hmm. So. So, if, the, if the board doesn't object, I'll draft a letter, and let the board review it before it goes out of support for them. It's just for them to get funding for their trail grooming and, and so on. When do they need Grant? Uh, he didn't give me a deadline. I don't believe. Um, I don't. I don't see a date, but I'll I'll get it done fairly quickly. For you to review. So there was some damage up on the bridge, the new bridge. Do we know if that was what that was caused by? Um, sorry, nobody's raising their hand and saying that they did it, but okay. we talking with the, a couple of the vast members as well. They're pretty sure that it was it was the groomer. Um, and I okay. talked to Dave Rulo, uh, and he said they were going to take care of it. How extensive was the damage? It it uh, broke some of the sideboards, the railings, and things on on the bridge. It was on a, an on approach, so I mean, it wasn't it wasn't major, it wasn't structural, mm -hmm. more cosmetic ish. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. And then the the other one that I have is just uh, I I was asked at the last board meeting to uh, see if the town clerk would be willing to come and uh, to one of the board meetings to have a discussion, and very simply the answer was no. Not uh, not willing to do that at this time. So I think that just to put it a, a, a bug in your ear, we need to decide what our next steps are there uh, with how we want to proceed. So that request was for both the town clerk and the assistant town clerk, or just the town clerk? 
Okay. So, so then I understand this. She has offered her resignation, put in her resignation. Does that have to be formally accepted by the board? We should probably take and do something, but I don't believe legally it has to be. How my and I'm just talking because I don't know. But how do you proceed or advertise or to ask people for unless you formally accepted a resignation? Well, the, I just sorry to jump in. Yeah, no. The, the statute reads. My, the way that I read it, and I can make a copy and send it to the board so they can have their own interpretation of it as well, but the way I read the statute, the board doesn't have to do anything until the date of the resignation, and they have, have to, within the next 10 days from that date of resignation, is when they have to do their action, what they have to decide whether they're going to appoint, what, what they're going to do. Um, but that, you know, that's kind of last minute as well for everybody, right? You can, you can, the board has the opportunity to do whatever they desire at this point going forward to prepare as well. But from a statute standpoint, you don't have to do anything until that date. Okay. I, I think the statutes were written for when a, uh, when a person resigns today. Today, yeah. right? Because, yeah. again... And she future, is future. the other thing the statute mentions is she has until the day of that to resignation to withdraw it. Exactly. She desire as well. So. And I'll go along along those lines. I will put out there that I was really hoping um, that Rosemary would come before us and have the discussion because I think as a select board we are in a position where we need to be as proactive as possible, and at the same time we value her her experience, her expertise, and whether um, there is any room for discussion and potentially a withdrawal of this if she were to continue as a All student. I can say to that is she told me that she is not going to be withdrawing it. Okay. So she doesn't plan on it. So really the best, the, the best case scenario if she was to come is how <coughs> we could learn from it and move forward. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I was looking and at it as And I don't see that we're going to have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I respect her decision, certainly. But we have from now until the end of June to do something. Yeah. I think we've got to have our ducks in a row before the end of June. <laughs> right. <laughs> before, because given given the amount of paperwork <coughs> from CVH and the births and the deaths and all that that have to be recorded and everything else that's going on in town, if we don't do something... And two elections come up. And exactly. And, and at this point, we'd have to, uh, whether, if there's interest from Corinne, she's run elections before or been involved in the election process, and if not, who else has? So she may not even have interest of taking it, filling full-time position. Uh, for, so it's something that maybe we need to invite her in and see if there's an interest. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to speak for her, but I'm relative, relatively confident she's interested in it. Okay. Just based on comments and discussion. Question. Well, if she was to come in, is that uh, it's just is that going to be open uh, public meeting or is that, that if Corinne was to come in and have discussion of that position? It has to be open. Okay. It has to be open. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not a contract or a labor issue because she's a, she's appointed. Well, she's appointed, but uh, she was appointed through an election. Okay. You know, it's Rosemary's appointment. Anything else, Vince? No, sir. Oh. But that, that appointment, that appointment technically ends with Rosemary's resignation. She'd have to be appointed by the board to go forward. No, sorry. No, the statute oh. clearly states okay. that, that the appointed right. position stays until um, a decision is made, uh, the next election, right, and then it becomes the next elected person. That could to make that decision to appoint. Okay. 
That's not, it wasn't my understanding. I'm glad you're on it. No, that's, that's, again, and I'll get copies yeah. of these and send yeah. them to you okay. guys. You may have a different interpretation, but that's yeah. the way I read it. Okay. In the executive session? No, sir. Yeah, Joe. Sorry if it goes back and forth. <laughs> Do we, where are we with uh, the assisted treasurer? <laughs> so, we are enrolled in the internship at Norwich University and we are online with them for distribution for the notification of that position through several hundred schools, um, both local and outside the state, uh, through that program called it's, a, it's Handshake is the site that it's on through Norwich. Um, I forget the name of the organization. I have to look it up and vary through the state, uh, where they also have the uh, the notice uh, of the position and are working with them. I have one more person to contact that the state gave me also to raise that. So this has been out there for close to six weeks now, and I have had zero responses, including uh, a week in the newspaper as well. And we've had zero responses to that. So in, in advertising this, this is all salaries based off experience. Correct. And there's no start. No, because it's anything. such a widespread, I'd be, I'd be nervous to put any type of salary in there. If we okay. get an intern or if we get someone with 10 years experience, there's a significant difference there, right? Sure. So it's to commensurate with, with experience. But, so yeah, that, that's the good news of where we are with that. What a spectacular time it is in our country to be looking for a job. Oh my gosh. <laughs> good Lord, yeah. Yeah. Trouble is, the only one's looking at over 60. <laughs> <laughs> I got one I'll give away. <laughs> okay, anything else? I'd make a motion to adjourn. Your second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We adjourn.